All right, chapter 11, sanctification. Sanctification is now that you are justified, no longer dead in your sins, but alive in Christ by grace through faith, God proceeds to make you more and more what he has declared you to be. Now, there's both a past tense of this that the New Testament uses. You've been sanctified. It's done. That's using sanctification kind of in the sense that theologians would talk about justification. But there's also the present tense ongoing sense of sanctification. Um, we, we pray for this. The Holy Spirit works for this, and he is working this in us, and it will be complete on the last day when we are raised bodily. Um, that sanctification is what theologians would properly categorize as sanctification, being made holy as Christ is holy, and the Holy Spirit works this in and through us, changes us from the inside out. Vivification is being brought back to life, being made alive again. This is one of the um, biblical analogies for sanctification. Simul use to set vicator is Latin for simultaneously justified and a sinner. So the Christian um, is still a sinner, um, but a forgiven sinner and justified um, through faith in Christ. So the, the life of sanctification is one of Simul justus et peccator. We are simultaneously sinners and saints, or justified ones, holy ones. Uh, good works. Good works are not what earns salvation. They, you know, they don't merit justification as a reward, but they are part of the Holy Spirit's purpose for you. And this might be worth just putting on the screen as quick review from Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Sometimes that verse 10 gets left out of the discussion. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So while good works do not earn salvation, they're part of the purpose of your salvation. Um, Christ saves you and proceeds to change you and work good in and through you and those good works god prepared beforehand for us to walk in so part of your purpose as a christian are these good works that the holy spirit is going to work in and through you god's good creation the human being redeemed in christ and now a temple of the spirit uh civil righteousness this is good works before our fellow man before our neighbor so good works where god is not the judge but our neighbor is the judge and civil righteousness is important, right? We want to live next to people who are civilly righteous, uh, law-abiding citizens who are fair and honest and kind. That's all civil righteousness. It doesn't save anyone, but boy, is it important for how we behave and live in relationship with one another. Christian righteousness is that that only a Christian could have because it's the righteousness of Christ. It's not the righteousness before our neighbor, it's the righteousness before God, or coram mundo, before the world in Latin. And Christian righteousness is that imputed or credited to us by faith, as we mentioned in chapter 9. Uh, bearing your cross. This is um, specifically the suffering or persecution that a Christian faces on account of of faith in Christ. Jesus warns, tells his apostles that they would be hated by all nations for his name's sake. He even tells his apostles, some of you they will beat, some of you they will kill. You're going to be dragged before synagogues and authorities and called to account. And we read some of that history in the book of Acts. So bearing your cross, specifically the suffering that a Christian faces on account of their faith or proclamation of Christ. Uh, Christian perfection. Um, this is the true promise that the Holy Spirit is perfecting us, and we will be perfect. We will be uh, made completely new, sinless, and um, completely holy on Resurrection Day and moving into eternity. Perfectionism would be a false understanding of this Christian perfection, as if the perfection is something that could happen before the last day, before resurrection, not by the Holy Spirit's doing, but by my doing, by my cooperation, um, that if I could just try harder, work harder, be more disciplined, I could reach a point right now where I no longer sin. That's the false teaching of perfectionism. I will remain simul justa set peccator, simultaneously justified and a sinner um, until Christ returns and makes all things new, including me. Four biblical images of sanctification. One of them was already stated above, vivification, um, this idea of being made new or alive again. Um, another one, is that of growth, 
um, just as God makes plants grow and humans grow, um, we grow in our sanctification. We, we grow in our knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ. Um, another image is that of an inner struggle. Think like a wrestling match inside of you between the old you that still frankly enjoys sin and is selfish and does not particularly love God or neighbor and the new you, the new man in you, the Holy Spirit driven identity in you that does love God and does love neighbor and seeks to please God in all that we do. So there's this inner struggle. And then the fourth biblical image for sanctification is that of changing clothes. Um, we daily put off any trust we might have had in our own righteousness or ourselves and daily put on trust in Christ's righteousness alone. Paul says we wear this in our baptism. We're clothed with Christ. We put on Christ. The key distinction between those images for conversion I was dead, now I'm alive, I was lost, now I'm found, I was blind, now I see. And these images for sanctification is those conversion images are um, a once and done thing. This is what I was, this is what I am. The sanctification images are like a daily ongoing thing. So daily being made alive, daily growing, daily wrestling, and daily changing clothes um, and putting on trust in Christ's righteousness. Uh, resources for sanctification. Uh, the word of God, word and sacrament, these things continue to deliver us the forgiveness and promises that they make to us. Uh, prayer. Um, God boldly invites us to ask anything in Jesus' name and he will give it to us. And we can know that where what we ask for aligns with God's good will, we will receive it. And where it doesn't, um, then we'll re receive something better, something that is in accord with God's good will. Um, God promises he works all things for the good of those who love him. Even suffering, he works for the good of those who love him. Uh, resources for sanctification are fellowship and relationships with other Christians. Um, you will find much strength in the faith of your brothers and sisters in Christ, especially spiritual mentors like mom, dad, um, your pastor, um, hopefully your teachers. Uh, relationship between justification, sanctification, and conversion. Justification is more um, strictly that past tense sense of salvation, how you are um, made right with God by grace through faith in Christ. Sanctification, you can in a sense think of as present tense salvation. God is making you the right or righteous one he's declared you to be as the Holy Spirit works on you. Um, performs in and through you and you that will be complete on the last day and conversion is the moment that all started right conversion is the moment the word of god created faith in your heart all right that's unit four